Hello and good afternoon. Welcome to today's lesson. Uh, apologies, I am uh, a few minutes late. Um, however, I am now here and I now have a good connection. So, without, um, I can begin. Um, I'd just like to let you guys know that um, there's a new video up uh, which went up this morning. It's the first, it's, it's part one of three videos that will be coming out, and it's on nature. Um, it's inspired by outcomes, uh, unit seven, if I'm not mistaken, for the up intermediates. So if you are an up intermediate student, um, keep an eye out for the videos coming out this week. It will be helpful uh, to understanding a little bit more about narrative tenses. Okay, I've now shared the video for today, so uh, I can now begin. I hope all of you are doing well. Evelina says, hi, Richard. Hi, Evelina. Good afternoon. Irina, hi, Irina. Good afternoon. Welcome to today's lesson. Thank you very much uh, for coming. Uh, joining, sorry, not coming. You, you're, you're at home. Uh, today we are going to be looking at narrative. Uh, no, today we're going to be looking at relative clauses. Um, now I know that some of you might have been looking at relative clauses recently, um, but doesn't matter what level you are. It's always good to understand the relative clauses, and um, they are something that can be a little bit confusing because it's a it's a type of grammar, really, and this type of grammar is going to be different from language. There are going to be differences with between, well, yeah, between languages um, of when to use pronouns and if we use pr pronouns, how do we use them? Uh, so there can be a lot of first language interference when looking at relative pronouns. So. If you find them a little bit confusing, don't worry. Um, we'll start off simple, and as the lesson goes on, I'll gradually make things a little bit more difficult. Um, so I'll start off um, at a, like I said, I'll start off sort of uh, around the basic level, and I'll, we'll work our way up. And we'll see how far, how difficult uh, we can move up the chain. Arena says, good afternoon. Good after Arena. Welcome to today's lesson. I hope you're doing well. It's a lovely day today. So um, I don't, I mean, look, at four o'clock, I know quite a few of you will probably be thinking of uh, being at the beach or going to the beach. Um, I mean, look, it's a lovely, it, it is lovely at the moment. So I don't blame you guys if some of you decide to go to the, to the beach. Um, having said that, I mean, it, this is YouTube, so you can always watch the lesson later, but it is important to look at the live chat because that's where I put all the information, um, as I don't have a whiteboard behind me or I can't, I don't have the tech, I don't have the know-how yet to put a white board up and explain things like that. So all the explanation is always going to be in the live chat area section, sorry. So let's begin. First of all, let's just uh, try and understand something. And that is, what exactly is a relative clause? Uh, what are we looking at? Um, when we're discussing a relative clause. But when we look at a relative clause, we are always going to be looking at the following, really. So let me just copy this in over here, okay? We are always going to be look, looking at what we would call relative pronouns. So pronouns like who, that, which, whose, uh, where, and when for example. So that's the first thing that we need to know. That's the type of, that's what we're looking at. That's the type of pronoun, the relative pronoun. So that's what we are looking at. Then you might be asking us, are you asking yourselves, okay, so what exactly does this do? What is its function? Because it is a grammatical, we have it because of grammar. Uh, well, we use it because we are trying to define or identify a noun 
uh, that comes before or precedes. Now, precedes is another word for comes before. So I'm just going to put that in brackets, okay? Sandra says, hi, Richard. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Sandra. Good afternoon. And Leondino as well. Good afternoon. Welcome to today's lesson. So that's the important thing. When we are looking at relative clauses, it's going to be a relative pronoun like who, that, which, whose, where, when, for example. And it's going, we use it because it has a function. It we're trying to use it to define or to identify the noun that precedes or comes before them. So that is its function. Now, let's start off with a very simple example, okay? And then I'm going to ask you guys to come up with your own basic example. So I know that we're all on the same page, okay? Let's say we've got this sentence. Do you know the girl who started in grade seven last week, okay? Um, if you want to try and make this slightly different, you could say, do you know uh, the guy who uh, joined the class on Monday? Okay, so the first thing that we have to think about is, okay, who is our relative pronoun and who is talking about uh, either the girl in sentence one or the guy in sentence two. So we've got the girl who, girl who or guy who, for example. So that's why it is just clarifying who we are talking about. And in that sense, we are clarifying our subject. So before we move on, as this is the basic entry level into understanding this, let me just see if you guys can create your own example of a relative clause, uh, of a relative clause for example. So uh, you can write it as a question. Uh, you can write it as an answer. If you want to try... Yeah, try and write it as a sentence or try to write it um, as a question, either way. Um, but let me just see first if you guys uh, all on, uh, are on the same page here. By the way, the same page is that we all understand the same thing. That's what same page means as a phrase. Uh, are we on the same page? Same page. Great phrase to use same page simply means uh, do is simply means understand the same thing or to understand the same thing okay so are we on the same page do we all understand the same thing here and then from there we will uh, we will we will proceed and um, I'll give you some more examples uh, for different types of uh, relative pronouns. And then we'll begin to start trying to put this into different, into longer sentences or within paragraphs as well. And that's, that's when it begins to become difficult, really. As soon as we're trying to um, put not just sentences down, but trying to put paragraphs. And when we start writing paragraphs, that is when a relative pronoun can become a little bit different. It, it can also become a bit different if you're talking about more than one person or more than one thing at the same time within a sentence. So that's the challenge. And that's what we're going to work our way towards in this lesson. So if you might think, wait a minute, Richard, this is a bit easy for me. Hold on. But this is going to become a little bit more difficult as we go along. However, if you're thinking, oh, I don't know, Richard, this sounds like this is going to be difficult. Don't worry. We're going to walk through the steps together. Um, but it's always, it's, look, who is a good one to start off with as well? Let, let's be honest. Who is a very good one to start off with? Um, and it'll lead me on to the second one as well, uh, because there's a particular relative pronoun that can sometimes cause a little bit of confusion. So I'll give you guys just a couple more 
uh, a few, uh, let's say about half a minute more, 30 more seconds. See if you guys can tell me, uh, give me an example of your own relative uh, pronoun, um, own relative clause sentence um, using who, and then we'll move on to the next one. If no one writes anything, I'll just move on to the next thing. I'm going to say I'm going to take silence as uh, as a yes, Richard. I understand what you're talking about. Okay, so I'll just give you a few more seconds, and then we'll move on. Okay, so let's look at the next one. Now, the next one is um, actually I'm going to look at. We're going to go through each basic one to begin with, just so we are absolutely clear, just in case there's any confusion. Uh, Sandra says, do you see the man which is close by the corner? Ah, Val, Sandra, here we've got man. Now, man is a person. So if we're talking about a person, we can only use either who or who. Uh, Mm. Yes. Just wanted to make sure if I was going to miss out anything there. Who or whose? That's a very important thing. If we're talking about a person, it's who or whose. Uh, we can actually also use that as well for a person. Um, and I'll give you an example as to when we can use that. As for your preposition, do you see the man who is close by the corner? Okay, you've got close. You've got options. Close to the corner or in the corner. Close to is not in. So in the corner, close to the corner. In the corner, close to the corner. Those are your two options. Evelina says, who was the guy who <laughs> who was the guy who was with you last night? Yeah, that's a good sentence, Evelina. Yes. Who was the guy who was with you last night? Um, yeah, that's a good sentence. Well done. OK. Um, yeah. So as we go through, we are going to look at the pronouns that can be used for person or thing. As I've said over here, um, with the person, you've got three options, who, whose and that. So let's just start off looking at the person. So we started off with an example of who. Now, whose, you might be thinking, wait a minute, whose? What are we talking about with whose? Um, so let's go with an example like this. Um, let's see. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to. Nah, never mind. Okay, I'm just going to go with this sentence. I think it's it, it it does the trick. Okay, the student is a child whose parents own Tesco's supermarket. Uh, don't worry about Tesco supermarket. That's just a supermarket in England. Now, the important thing here is. The student is a child whose parents own Tesco's supermarket. Whose? Whose, okay. We need to think here. Whose is who's talking about which noun? Which noun is it talking about? Is it talking about the student or is it talking about the child? Either way, you're talking about the same subject. That's the other thing. Um, you're talking about this particular child who is a student. Um, so in this case, the child who is the student, and then we've got whose parents own Tesco. All right. So it's an important thing to understand here. So whose can be used for, uh, the, for a person. Now, we can also use it 
it's true, we can use it for a thing, but at the moment, we're just using it as a person. Now, in this case here, when we're saying the student is a child whose parents own Tesco's, okay, whose is referring to the child. Child comes just before who. So you've got the noun and then you've got the relative pronoun. The relative pronoun whose is talking about the child. Whose parents own Tesco's. So that is an example. If you want another example, we could write uh, the girl is a singer whose album is currently number one in the charts. Here we go. So the girl is a singer whose album is currently number one in the charts. Here's another example. In this case, singer is the noun. The relative pronoun is whose. Whose is talking about the singer. And it's talking about something to do with the singer. In this case, her album, which is currently number one in the charts. It would be the same as saying, uh, for instance, let's think of a famous artist, music artist. Um... Oh, why can't I think of a theme? I'm thinking of Adele. Okay, let's see if we can create one with Adele. Ad Adele, is it like that? You know what? She hasn't been in. She hasn't sung for so long. I forgot. Yes, it is. There's an e on the end, isn't there? So Adele is a was no is a singer. who's famous for singing Skyfall, Let It Crumble. So Adele is a singer who's famous. No, that doesn't work. Sorry, wrong. Apologies. That is not a correct sentence. That would be who is. So Adele is a singer whose album is currently number one. The one I wrote before would be have, would have to be who is. So um, Adele is a singer whose album is currently number one. Paolo comes in whose are the responsible for this work of art. No, that would have to be who. Uh, that would have to be who in this case. Um, I see what you're trying to go for there, but not. It. let's see if we can rewrite your sentence for a second there. Sandra says, the boy whose nose grew, who, ah, the boy whose nose grew longer every time he told a lie. Oh, okay, yes, I see what you're going for. You're going for Pinocchio there. Okay, good attempt. Uh, the boy whose nose grew longer every time Every time he told a lie. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking of. Um, it sounds like the sentence is not complete. That's why I'm thinking about it, because I'm expecting Pinocchio at the end. So if you said, the boy whose nose grew longer every time he told a lie is Pinocchio, then that's a complete sentence. Arena says, do we know teachers whose students study well? Okay. Good sentence. Okay, Rena, that works. Okay, so well done, guys. I mean, who's can be a little bit of a tricky one, granted. Um, let's say, let's rewrite the uh, Paolo. Let's rewrite your one, okay? You could say, who is the, who is responsible for the work of art? Who's responsible for the work of art? Who's painted um, the queen as a monkey? I'm just going to write a silly 
a silly sentence uh, adding um, I'm, I'm expanding on your sentence Paolo so who is res who is responsible for the work of art who's no that's going to be has to be who has no that's not going to work no unfortunately Paolo I can't think of writing your rewriting your sentence with who's at this point I'd have to rewrite the sentence very differently um I will leave it to you, actually, because I do need to move on to the next thing. But if you can think of rewriting your sentence, Paolo, uh, have a go. So remember, you might have to go work of art whose. Um, the artist who... No, I need to... I would have to think about that myself. I'm trying to think of too many things at the same time. Um, and I should really move on to the next thing because we're going to run out of time at this rate. Now, let's look at the next two. Uh, this is going to be very... I'm going to do both of them at the same time because it's important. Um, I'm actually just going to finish off with that, actually. I'm just going to finish off with that when we're talking about a person. Because then we need to move on to things. Who walked on the moon? Okay, so this is the first example. He was a man that walked on the moon. Okay, so in this case, we're talking about Ar Neil Armstrong, for example. He was a man that walked on the moon. You could say he was a man who walked on the moon. You will see that if I use that and I'm talking about a person, I probably can also have the option of changing that for who. But the reason why I'm going to go with that, maybe, is because I'm talking about an action, really. Um, again, that's a very... And that might be my reason for going with, with, um, uh, with that instead of who. But it's a really small uh, difference. But that's effectively it. Again, I could say she, it, she was an actress that acted in Star Wars, for example. Again, I could replace that with who if I wanted to. Um, but that is why we can use um, that with a person as well. Okay, so those are our choices over here. Um, I think you feel free to, 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 to write your own one with that. But I do want to move on to the objects because that is where things can begin to get a little bit confusing. And we need to be very careful when trying to choose the right thing. Now, when we're talking about a thing, um, first of all, what can we use? Well, we can use uh, which, for example. We can use that. We can use who's. Um, and we can also use, yeah, those are the typical ones. Um, we'll start off with that. So which, that, and whose? That is when we're talking about a thing. Now, let's start off with, because uh, there's which and thing. Let's go with, Okay, originally I was talking about an author, uh, sorry, whose. So let's start off with giving you an example of how something can be a bit different between using whose for a person and whose for a thing. So let's go with this. Originally I said, for instance, okay, she is, let's say I wrote, said um, he is a writer. Actually, I'm going to compare them like this, okay? First of all, this is a book whose author, okay? Uh, this is a book whose author, um, and then we can continue the sentence. This is a book whose author um, was famous for writing Harry Potter, whose author lived in the 19, in the early, in the early part of the 20th century. OK, you can continue your sentence however you like. Now, if we were to write this as a person, not as a thing, instead of using a book whose, in this case, this is a book. We're talking about the book, not the person. We'd have to change it around. So we could say he is an 
author whose books okay so as we can see this is the important thing we need to think about the subject are we talking about the subject being a book or are we talking about a, which is a thing or are we talking about a subject which is a person if it's the person we go for author if it's the thing it is a book um, and this is the same if we wrote it as a as a singer and a song for example this is a song whose singer um, she is a singer whose songs and we can continue our sentence like that so i'd like you guys just to give me your own example of whose and feel free to try try and write to the start of two sentences we don't need to complete the sentences but feel free to try and write two sentences using whose one when you're talking about a thing and one talking about a person i mean these are these are examples that are quite important in order to be able to get right because <clears throat> it's always important to know what your subject is. Is it a thing or is it a person? Sandra says, this is a receipt who's created a famous... Oh, recipe. Oh, sorry, I read receipt instead of recipe. Sorry. This is a recipe who's created a famous chef. Hmm. You're really close. You need to put chef after whose. So this is a recipe whose creator, actually, you need to go with creator. You need to go with the, the noun creator whose creator, whose creator became a famous chef. So that's quite close. That's quite close. You would have to say recipe, blah, 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 whose creator... So you have to go with the noun. Uh, you will see that, by the way, a lot. Okay, don't forget the noun here. Whose creator became a famous chef. Okay, don't forget about that. I mean, look, guys, if you are going to... Look at it this way, when I use whose, it doesn't matter if I'm talking about a thing or a person. It's going to be... Noun plus whose plus noun. That, that's how I'm going to have to put it. It's dependent on the nouns. So if I'm going to use whose, I need noun, whose, noun. Uh, this is a hero whose story surprised us. Irina, good, well done. Good, and here we've got hero, the noun, whose, plus noun again, story. So that's a good example. Um, okay, guys, so there we go. We've got some examples there. And that is beginning to come together quite nicely. Okay, right. So now let's move on to the next one. This time we're going to look at which and that, because which and that can be really annoying, actually. Okay, let's start off with that. Um, right, do I have, how many examples do I have? That can be a little bit annoying, but I've got a good trick of how to use that anyway. So imagine we can say, ask, can I have that pencil I gave you this morning? Can I have that drink? Can I have that drink you gave me last time? Okay, what am I doing with that? Can I have that drink? Uh, can I have... Can I have the pencil? Actually, I'm going to change this because there's a point I wanted to make and I didn't, I'm not going to be able to make my point. It's just a good way of trying to do it. Can I have... No, I'm going to leave it at this for now. 
So can I have the pencil that I gave you this morning? Can I have uh, can I have the book that you lent me last time? Okay. Uh, lent obviously is uh, to is when you borrow something. Okay, can I borrow that? Um, I lent it from you. Okay, so they are synonyms. Uh, they mean something very similar. It means to borrow, but I don't want to get down. I don't want to spend time looking at that particular word. Now, can I have the book that you lent me last time? Can I have the pencil that I gave you this? that I gave you this morning. We've got noun. Okay, being pencil or book plus that plus pronoun. Okay, and that's an important thing to, to look at over here, okay? I've got noun, that, pronoun. This, okay, you do not need to stick to that formula when using that, but it's a very good strategy. It's a good way to make sure that you are using it correctly. Because, of course, again, we need to remember we are talking about a relative clause. And when you're talking about a relative clause, you need to think of the nouns, which is why they're relative clauses. So when writing a relative clause and you're going to put in that, go for this structure, noun, that, pronoun, and it's going to work. Uh, it's, well, it's certainly going to help you create a good sentence. Sandra says, this is a building whose architecture impressed us. This is a building whose... Hmm. I wonder. Oh, I suppose when you're talking about a thing... This is a building whose architecture. This is a building. This is a building whose architecture. You know what? Okay. I'm going to say this, Sandra. In terms of following the grammatical structure, that is fine. However, in terms of its reading, there's something about it that doesn't quite, it, it, something just slightly off about it. And this is, this is where we look at something very, very small. It's one of those things that you can sometimes find. You've written something, it's grammatically correct, but there's something about the sense of the sentence that is still slightly off. And what I'm getting at here is this, the feeling that we need to, at some point in your sentence, refer to the architect at some point in that sentence. So I think if we rewrote that sentence and found a way of fitting in the architect at some point, the context of that sentence is going to make more sense. And that's the only thing I would say. For example, I'm going to see if I can just show you what I mean. Okay, Sandra, I'm going to write an example just to show you what I mean, okay? I'm going to rewrite your sentence.
Okay, the architecture of this building, whose architect lived in the 1700s, really impressed us. This is what I mean. So I've just rewritten your sentence just a little bit. Um, the architecture of this building, whose architect. Now, as you can see here, I've got building plus whose plus the, 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 the architect, the architect, the noun. Lived in the 1700s, really impressed us. Why am I doing that? It's because of context, of uh, the sense of do we fully understand what we um, what we are talking about? Here, it's very clear you're still talking about the architect, the architecture. Sorry, the architecture of this building. Who's architect? So the architecture is obviously dependent on the architect. You are still saying that the architecture really impressed. You are not saying the architect impressed. You're saying the architecture imp is impressive. But by including the architect, there's a little bit more context within that sentence, which means it's now a better sentence to read. So that is what I mean. And these are really small, uh, these are really small things. I, be I would say this, look, if you wrote your sentence, your original sentence, Sandra, at an up intermediate or intermediate level. Um, I'm not going to worry too much about that. Um, what I'm doing is I'm trying to give you uh, a little bit more, an example that can help you develop your English to raise it to another level. Um, and when we raise it to another level, it increases the, under the, the level of meaning and for the reader to fully understand. So that's what, I, that's what I was getting at. I mean, you could say, Richard, aren't you being a little bit silly here? Why are you uh, going into something like that? And to which I might have to say, I know. Um, but it's something I wanted to point out because context does matter and meaning matters an awful lot. So I would like you to have a little think um, and feel free just to try and uh, send some, create some more of your or more of these sentences. Um, if you like, you can have a go at trying to write another sentence for me, and we can look at that as well. Um, but it is quite an important one. I mean, you do find this sometimes when you look at the sentence grammatically, it ticks all the boxes, but there's something about the meaning. Uh, that you feel is is not quite right. And usually it's because there's a word that is missing and that adds a little bit of extra context. Evelina says, can I have the shirt I loaned you yesterday? Um, okay, I see what you're going for there, Evelina, but the word you still have to use is lent. You would loan a property, yes, uh, but you don't loan shirts. Uh, you lend shirts, okay? Arena says, please help me understand the phrase. I'm not that nervous. Oh, I'm not that nervous. Oh, right, okay. Um, I'm not that nervous. I'm not that nervous. Slightly different. Um, but if you do use that term, I'm, I'm not that something. For instance, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not that... Crazy. I'm not. I'm not that stupid. Um, I'm not that clever. And I'm going to point something out here. This is if you're stressing that. If you're stressing that, it means you are a little bit of whatever the noun is, but not to the level someone is suggesting. So it's like, for instance, okay, a good example is this. You have a million euros and so you you know you have money, um, and you want to buy a house, and someone says, "Okay, 
uh, you want to buy a house. This house is two million. So you might say, well, I'm rich, but I'm not that rich. Um, so you're trying to say you're not to the level that the person is suggesting. Um, again, it could be like a chef, for example. You're good at cooking. You might be really good at cooking. But then they, someone asks you to do something that is too difficult. So you could say, well, I'm, I'm, good, I'm a good chef, but I'm not that good. You've got to go up to that level. Um, I should say bit of a noun or actually, sorry, not noun. Sorry, I, I got that wrong. That should be the adjective or whatever you're talking about. Sorry, I uh, got that wrong. Adjective. So that's what we mean. Now, we've got five minutes left. So I do want to just have a little look at which, and then that will take us to the end of the day. Um, ba -ba -ba, let's see. So a notebook is a computer which can be carried around. Um, a oh, what's they what what they called? Um, a Kindle is a device. Device is a general word for something um, electronic. Electronic product. Uh, so a Kindle is the is a device which can be that can be used to read yeah a kindle is a device which can be used to read books for example um, if you want to you can say um, a an ipad is a product which an iPad is a product which costs a lot, for example. So what am I doing here? I've got my noun, product, uh, Kindle, device, whatever it might be, plus which, plus some form of verb. That's what I'm using here. So uh, be it a modal verb like can or uh, costs, for example, that is the example here. So as you can see before, with that, I was going to go, we're going with noun plus that plus pronoun, for example, with which we're going to go with noun plus which plus verb. And um, these are some basic structures you can use when creating a relative clause that can always help you to get it right or certainly can help you to do better. Um, increases your chances of, of, of writing a good sentence. I'm going to give you one more example and then uh, I'm going to ask you guys to see if you guys can create your own sentence with which. Uh, so one more example could be... Um, Oh, let's see. Simple example. A train is a form of transport which can be faster than uh, that, which can be faster than than cars. For example, again, it's a very simple, basic sentence. Um, so that's another example. So, guys, we're coming to the 
we're coming to the end of today's lesson. Um, if I have confused any of you in any way at any point, I do apologize. Um, what I would ask you guys to do is if you have any questions, just ask uh, questions in the comment section underneath and I will answer. If any of you, um, if any of you want to share more examples, you can do. Just leave them in the comments section underneath. Um, however, I'm just going to put my uh, work email up here uh, for now. I'm going to leave it up here for a, until the end of the lesson. Uh, Okay, so if, however, some of you um, don't want to ask me some more questions, um, but you don't want to put them in the live chat section or you don't want to leave them as a comment section, I've just put my email, uh, my work email address there in the live chat uh, section. Uh, feel free to uh, email me. And you can, um, you can ask me your questions. You can ask me to give you more examples of what, I am, of what we were talking about today. Um, I mean, look, relative courses can be, can be a little bit tricky. Um, I think the one which probably perhaps, and I probably was responsible for it, actually, the one that perhaps caused the most confusion at some point might have been the one with whose um, but by and large, I think, I think we've all learned, I think you guys managed to follow uh, the lesson very well today. Um, if you found at any point it was a little bit difficult, don't worry. Relative clauses can be very difficult. Um, they are annoying. Um, and you do have to think about them. But nonetheless, for the, Leondina says she loves to wear clothes which are expensive. Yeah, that's good. That's fine. Um, good sentence, Leondina. Um, so guys, don't worry if you have found today a little bit difficult. Um, if you want me to spend more time looking at relative clauses, I'm more than happy to do so. Um, yes, sometimes you can probably use one relative clause and replace it with another relative. Sorry, you can use one type of uh, relative clause and replace it with another, like, for instance, which that are sometimes interchangeable. Um, you've also got that and uh, who, for example, which you can sometimes swap about. So there are always going to be some extras to this. Um, but overall, guys, uh, please make sure you like the video, share. Uh, don't forget, we have another video out um, that is a short video and the part two I'm going to show you guys tomorrow as well. I'm going to release it tomorrow. So thank you so much for joining all of you in the live chat section, by the way, thank you for, for, for writing. Um, and it's, it's a massive help when you do write because it means I get to see what you guys understand, don't understand, or if you have any questions, I will always try to do my very best to explain things to you. But without a board, sometimes this can become a little bit difficult. Um, but for those of you who did write in the live chat section, thank you very much. Um, it's always great to see you guys trying to, to interact. It helps a lot. To all of you watching who might not have written in the live chat section, thank you very much for watching um, and still you know, participating in your own way. So thank you very much, guys. Uh, make sure you like the video, share, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And I will see you guys tomorrow at four. Evelina, you too. Arena, you too. Leon Leondina, you too. Um, actually, a special shout out for all of you who participated in today's lesson. Leondina, Evelina, Irina, uh, Sandra. Um, I am I missing anyone? Uh, Paolo, you too. Um, and Arena as well, and Evelina, if I haven't said your name already. Um, you're welcome, Sandra. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, and see you guys tomorrow. Um, wait a minute. That reminds me. What 
Am I ah tomorrow is time clauses. That's it. So tomorrow we're gonna look at time clauses. Thank you so much, guys. See you tomorrow. Have a great evening and bye for now.